Welcome back to that 1870s homestead, friends. I'm Rachel. My name is Todd. And it is actually January 2nd. But before we get into what will it be, season six? Yeah. Season, season six. six here on YouTube for us. Before we get into what are our plans for 2022, we still have one 2023. more. 2023, right? <laughs> we still have one more video to wrap up on 2022. And our last video that we published summing up the year was kind of like some of our most proud moments, I guess, mm -hmm. the things that really went well for us. And um, we said in that video that we would bring you guys failures, lessons learned, disappointments, the things that didn't go so well last year. And if there is any lesson to be shared, <laughs> we'll, we'll share it. Or otherwise, it's just a learning opportunity for us. And maybe we'll talk about how we'll learn from it. Yeah, we we like to share our successes with you guys, but we also like to share our failures and our things that don't go well because it gives you an opportunity to to learn from us, to, to learn from our mistakes and to learn from our yeah. struggles. So. Yeah, where we are um, first generational homesteaders. We didn't grow <laughs> up in this lifestyle. We have no experience other than the experience we're gaining each year we do this. All right, so um, I think we'll take it similarly to the last video and we'll start from January forward. So <laughs> I'm going to say this and it might, it may not be a popular opinion I successfully grew again for from seed all of my starts, all of my tomatoes, and I had some new seed varieties I was really excited to try. And um, one of the tomato varieties that did so, so well for me, <laughs> like all of it, like mm. the majority of my seed starts that thrived and just were super healthy, um, were this variety. They were huge producers in the garden, so I ended up with tons of them. But I didn't like them. <laughs> I didn't really like them fresh, and I certainly did not like them for canning. And that's the black crimson tomato. So it was just overly acidic, and it was filled with pockets and pockets of gelatinous seeds like so much gelatinous CD. And I, you, if you're not new mm -hmm. here, I'm a lazy canner. And to have to go through and sort through that much seed was nauseating to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I will never grow those again. That it, But if you like acidic tomatoes and you don't mind seeding a lot of seeds out of your tomatoes, Maybe it's the perfect tomato for you. For me, it's a lesson learned to never grow them again. Mm -hmm. I remember when you were starting the seeds and up potting them into the little plastic cups. Yeah. My job that night was to write on the side of the cup what type of tomato it was. And I remember so many black creme, black creme. That's all I kept yeah. writing over and over. They I did think that really was like well. Yeah. The, the most of any variety was those. And, yes. And we didn't really like them. Yeah, unfortunately, no. But you're not yeah. always gonna like everything. But right, you grow. I mean, like when you grow it the first time, you don't really know. Right. Yeah. So now I know that that won't go on my grow list again. And now you know too. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one, trying to do things somewhat chronologically throughout the year, in the spring, um, actually go back to 2021 when we harvested our 2021 chickens we harvested a lot of our old laying hens from right. our chicken coop that's right up here by our house and we knew when 2021 came along in the spring we wanted to get some new <laughs> in 22 we wanted to get some new laying hens so late winter early spring we got what was it six new chickens yeah mm -hmm. six seven eight something like mm -hmm. that and we adopted a what kind of chicken was that a silky a silky rooster from one of our friends who needed to find a new home for it we had all these new chickens this spring and they they were doing great they were somewhat integrated into the chicken coop everyone was starting to get along we went to wisconsin for our okay. daughter's wedding 
And when we came home, almost all the chickens were gone. There was no sign of struggle. There was no feathers. There was no dead chickens. They were just gone. Yeah. Three days later, I think I found some feathers finally. Over by our barn, there was like a tunnel that went under there, and there was some feathers around there. Whatever caught it has opposable thumbs. <laughs> we don't know. I mean, probably a raccoon. Right. Well, we ended up we ended up setting up a camera in there and watching every night when we got home mm -hmm. what was happening, and it was a raccoon. And we do have an automatic door on our chicken coop, chicken coop that closes every night when it gets dark and it opens every morning. With us not being here for a With week. With the dogs not And our dogs yeah. weren't here for a week. Yeah. Those raccoons got way too comfortable. Yeah. And they knew and learned the timing of the door that, hey, mm -hmm. half an hour, it's about to get dark. I better go get dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a, a, a sucky lesson, I guess you yeah. could say, to lose all those chickens. You buy them from the store, you feed them, you raise them up. And you think you have the right safety protocols in place for even when you are out of town. Um, and still, I mean, I think it's just something that raising your own livestock, you need to be prepared that you will have losses right. potentially. So we did set some traps. Our neighbor also set some traps. I think between the two of us, we ended up catching 10 to 12 raccoons during the course of the summer and four or five possums, I yeah. think. So a yeah. lot. So be prepared for predator management. It comes in waves, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And like we'll deal with it one year, the next year it won't be so bad. And then they come back and you got to deal with it again. But you've replaced your chickens and they're oh, doing well. Mm -hmm. We've got some new so, ones. They're doing good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go back to the garden. So back to the gardening. If you guys followed my journey last year, you really didn't see much of it as compared to prior years. A lot of that had to do just with me having to work a lot on my full-time job and not having the time to garden. What happened because of that is my garden got overtaken by grass, by weeds. It was a nightmare to manage. I'd never dealt with that before. So I found less and less joy gardening last year than I ever have before. And I think it was just because every time I went down there, it was like this... <sighs> <laughs> I even sad, noticed that yeah, I talked to you about it one Yeah, day, this like, uh, sad disappointment feeling. Even though we got tons of food out of it and it was a huge like yield out of it, I think the fast pace that I had to get out there, harvest, do things, get it back in the house, I just didn't have those leisurely mornings and those pitsin and puddling time to manage it and... Um, I don't know what I could have done differently. I know what I'm doing differently this year to uh, make sure that um, that doesn't happen again. But in hindsight, I, I just, I think it was a year that I had to let go and um, be okay with the, uh, that little bit of disappointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with our jobs, there's there's, there comes points in times when there's only so much that yeah. we can do mm -hmm. between the homestead, the YouTube, and our normal day jobs. Every now and then something has to fail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that is just to say, too, with wherever you are in your seasons of life, whether it's jobs or raising young kids or uh, limitations physically, we all have limitations and seasons in our life that... If you can just come to terms with it and push through it, you're still going to have something to show for it versus doing nothing. Yeah. So, how about that? Good job. Number four for the year was, this was a year of pigs for us. It was. We raised two pigs every other year, and that's our pork that lasts us through that year when we don't raise them. Mm-hmm through the, the next year's harvest. So we raised new pigs this year. We raised Tamworth pigs. We got them from a sweet couple up in northern Michigan, Sweetbriar Farm. 
They were great little piglets. Fantastic pigs. Super cute little piglets. Easy on the paddock pasture. Mm -hmm. Um, We raised them. We got them in June 1st, basically. June 1st. And harvest was October 19th or something like that. Something like that. The failure around that, if you didn't catch that, was that with our two pigs that we raise every year, one of them died about two weeks before we were taken to the processor. Yeah. And we we think, we suspect, and we also consulted with the breeders that we got the pig from, mm-hmm. um, that it died from pneumonia. And it's something that we've never had to deal with before. Apparently there are signs of pneumonia in pigs, coughing, pigs will cough. And coughing, a coughing pig isn't always pneumonia. If a pig is eating, sometimes little food particles, if you feed like that really dry food, can get caught in their throat. So if they're coughing while they're eating, they may not have pneumonia. Ours was coughing when they weren't even eating. She right. was walking around the pasture one day coughing, and I didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, in a jokingly, like we used to joke with our kids, I was like, hey, go get a drink of water, man. Mm-hmm. And went about my day, not knowing that, hey, this isn't good that this pig is doing this. So mm-hmm. If we would have known, we, we could have gotten some medication. We could have given her a couple shots of antibiotics that would have helped, hopefully. But right. we lost a big purchase of a baby pig, plus the amount of food it took to feed that baby pig all the way up until harvest weight. We lost all of that. Plus the harvest that she would have yielded. And the, the meat, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think... You know, it was. It's sometimes it's hard to take constructive criticism, and I think one of the harshest comments we got on that video was somebody said, "Well, if you were if you were ra- choosing to raise pigs, you should have read up on pig husbandry." And honestly, that's probably true, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we took it for granted that we had raised pigs twice before successfully, versus really sitting down reading about what are the you know, signs, issues mm-hmm. with raising pigs, and just took it for granted that things had went well the last two They did. Two they times. went perfectly. We're like, raising pigs is easy. Yeah. <laughs> you just put them in this pen, give them food and water, and you get bacon. Right. So that would be my recommendation is if you are getting into raising an animal for the first time, definitely read up on it and probably refresh your memory on that material, that knowledge each year, Mm -hmm. just in case some of it, you know, leaves your mind. Because even if I had read it like three years, you know, what, that would have been six years ago that Mm -hmm. we had our first pigs. And like you said, she was just walking around the paddock with this dry cough sound. And it, you know, within two days, she was passed away. Um, I don't know that I would have recognized it even then, because it seemed so innocent. Um, so probably just refreshing your mind on the husbandry of each animal that you raise. Mm -hmm. Um, even us for chickens, like after the polar vortex that just came through, um, I went out knowing from just years of raising chickens, I need to check them for frostbite, make sure everyone's okay. So just things that you might not think about, um. That's my lesson learned, I guess, is yeah. what I'm saying. Make sure make sure you know what bad things can happen and what signs to look out for. Yep, yep. So thanks for the constructive criticism. Um, the last one that we had is something that's just not necessarily homestead related, but it's homestead balance, your favorite word, balance. <laughs> And it's something that I strive really hard to achieve in our life, and that is playtime. Um, to make sure that this isn't all-consuming, both working full-time and homesteading, playtime is so important to me that we have time to get out on our kayaks, go to the cabin, go out on the boat, whatever it is, that we have time to just get away, decompress, do something else, enjoy, laugh, play during the especially during the summer yeah and we hardly did it at all (laughs) we never got the kayaks out once one time one time one time we did yeah one time and for undue circumstances our boat was in the shop way too long but 
I don't even know that we would have had time if it was out at the dock. So yeah. that being said, playtime is adventure time, getting outside, getting away from the hard work of every day is so important um, to my personal well-being, to what I believe we need as a couple. Um, and last year was just an overwhelmingly busy, hard year that there was very little playtime. Mm-hmm. It ended up kind of our play kind of ended up like the garden in a way. It was like, mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't make time for the garden. We didn't make time for play. We didn't, we just worked, filmed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, we will definitely fix that this year (laughs) there will be plenty of playtime i promise you that and we will share what can be shared here on youtube yeah for sure i definitely did not spend enough time at the cabin nope nope sad (laughs) (laughs) boohoo do better next year yep this year it is this this year year. this year (laughs) i have a question for you guys how long, leave a, leave a message down in the comments, do you guys typically leave up your Christmas tree before you take it down after Christmas? And I'm not looking at you because I'm judging <laughs> you by any means. I told you, leave it up, that's fine. I don't really care. But I just want to know, like, what is, like, your family's cycle or your routine look like? Yeah. For Some people, like, take it down, like, December 26th, tree's going down. Yeah. And- uh, my mom was always, it had to be down before January 1st. Oh, really? Yeah. And, like, um, but... And I used to try to do that when I was young. (laughs) And then, no, it's so much work. And I didn't get to even put up my Christmas tree till like December 20th this year. (laughs) So I'm like, that was too much work. I'm going to leave it up at least one more week. That's fine. (laughs) But thanks for coming along with us on, on our adventures for our recap of what didn't go so well in 2022. If you missed the what went really well, we'll make sure we link that at one of the cards at the end for you guys to check out. Yeah, and next um, we hope to share with you what our 2023 plans are. It's gonna look different around here, but we've got lots to share and uh, we'll be sharing that here shortly with you guys. All right, that sounds good. We'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.